Mr. Sonnenberg here. Uh, today we're going to talk about point versus non-point sources of pollution and, and uh, harmful waste to the environment. So this is for Science 9 students studying environmental chemistry. This is topic 5 in your textbook if you want to study there. Uh, what I want you to know by the end of this is I can describe and show how we can use biological monitoring to determine environmental quality. So basically we'll keep this quick. Uh, we're going to talk about two forms of pollutants. Uh, we're going to talk one uh, point source pollutants and the other is non point uh, non point source pollutants uh, so point source pollutants uh, they enter the environment in a specific location so if we were to take a look over here at the diagram uh, we see that this waste is definitely a point source we can easily monitor where it's coming from we can see it where it's introduced into the environment, okay, and if we needed to make corrections to it, we could do so. Okay, it's easy to pinpoint, it's easy to find. So uh, the second that we talk about is non-point. Okay. So now non-point can be uh, an example I would use is right here with the cattle. So now uh, a lot of times with nitrogens, fertilizers, things such as that. Uh, we can see the pollution here, but sometimes what it does is it can leach through. Uh, we can get it through uh, processes such as runoff. Non-point sourcing is very uh, hard to monitor. It's very difficult to do that. It's tough to control. And so, like I said, this can be runoff. It can be leaching, and you can see that right here Okay, in this. Uh, and what happens is it disperses quickly. So if it rains, we get this runoff occurring coming off uh, land. I think of golf courses as well. Uh, I work, uh, I don't work at the golf course, sorry. Uh, I'm a director at a golf course. So I get to look at our, our water management program. And along the way, I get to see uh, how this non-point sourcing is. So we use fertilizer on our, on our course. And we have to look at direction of flow. And, and along the way, uh, are these things being picked up as the watershed moves across our golf course and into uh, water sources and, and sub, uh, sub watersheds as well that lead to the major watersheds. So when we look at that though, uh, if we're introducing pollutants into this environment, uh, non-point is very difficult to monitor because it can be over a vast range or it can even leach through the ground into groundwater and such. So uh, what we've done is we've set, uh, agencies have set uh, regulations and protocols that are going to monitor and determine the amounts of uh, pollutants that are affecting, okay? Um, so we, we want to make sure that we keep our environment safe, but it's easy if we can understand both point and non-point sources. So I'm just going to direct your attention to this picture. So we have both point source and a non-point non source. Uh, so we have point source being direct discharge into the water and non-point being indirect discharge. Okay, so what we have is a sewage treatment plant right here in this part of the diagram. This is going to be a point source right there in the water. Now what we also have here, okay, is we have urban runoff, agricultural runoff, and that's all going to come from right here. So if we have this agricultural runoff, now that's going to move into the water. This is right here, okay, this is non-point sourcing. This is point sourcing, all right? So now at this point, we would see the most biological diversity above probably where all this source of pollution is, okay? Um, we might also see it farther down, but what we're doing is we're affecting these organisms as well. So now they are affected by being in this general area. The farther we get from the point of, of the pollution, the more dilute it becomes. But up here, we're actually seeing, uh, we'd probably see greater biological diversity because we are pre-pollutant, okay? So that would be upstream. So if I had, uh, like I said, this water treatment plant is going to create that point source the runoff and such is going to create non-point. This is difficult right here, difficult to monitor. This is easy to monitor. We can tell it's coming from right here, okay? So those are the two types of pollutants, okay? So we have both point source and non-point point source. Uh, biological or uh, biological diversity of species, this diversity, it, we would see it pre-source. Uh, 
And we get a lot of our pollutants and stuff. Remember, we get them from urban development. We get them from uh, industrial plants, logging, dams, and such. And a lot of these pollutants that enter the water source, you know, they all have harm. And obviously, the closer we are, we're going to see the decomposition zone. Then we're going to see the sewage zone. We're going to see the recovery zone and back to the clean zone. Um, and then pre-decomposition zone, we're going to see a clean zone. Whenever we have that clean zone, we're going to see a greater biodiversity of species. We're going to see a vast number of species, which are good. We can see biological indicators in there as well that are going to show us that it's clean quality water. And then at the sewage site or the site of pollution, whether it's point or non-source, then especially the point sourcing, we can really see uh, different biological and chemical indicators and determine uh, what the water quality is like. But main thing I want you to know here is what's the difference between point source pollutants and non-point source pollutants, okay? And which are easy to monitor and which are uh, difficult to monitor and some examples of what those are. So hopefully this has helped guys. This is point versus non-point uh, sourcing pollutants. And uh, that concludes the screencast. Hope this has helped. Talk to you later. Bye.